So this is actually going to require us to, to use something new. And that's the first thing I'm going to direct you to is, like a good programmer, you should be uh, relying on documentation um, to help you get through some of your new code. And it's the list uh, interface that we're going to need to use. So the list platform here, if we take a look at the documentation from Oracle, um, you can look at some of the methods that you can do with the list as far as getting an element, uh, finding out is it empty, um, using an iterator to traverse through the list. Um, that's one thing I should direct you to as well. Um, I'll open it in a new tab. And uh, the iterator is a way of traversing through a list. Usually what happens is you get a list, then you take an iterator to go through it. Now, you might be thinking, isn't that overkill? Why not just have the list able to traverse? But iterators are part of collections in Java. So if you learn to use an iterator, it won't matter if you're dealing with a list or if you're dealing with a tree or you're dealing with basically any kind of way of organizing your data. So here's the way the uh, iterator would work is you can ask if it has a next, you can get the next element, you can get the previous element, you can remove stuff, add stuff. So um, iterators are definitely helpful in the traversal. If you don't use an iterator, you can use this get method. Um, and if you're traversing from start to finish, it's not exactly efficient to use the get method. If you're only doing it one time, then yeah, it's fine to just use the get method in the list, but it's not efficient. And when we discuss algorithms later on, we'll talk about why that is. All right, so um, I'm gonna make a homing missile. That's basically what I'm gonna have here, or a smart bomb. And, oh, just realized I have to rotate that. Remember, uh, it's good to have everybody in sync about, uh, you know, not the uh, famous 1990s pop band that Justin Timberlake headed, but uh, in sync as in the same way that Greenfoot expects things to be. So everybody starts life facing east. Are you guys too young for in sync? Is that why it wasn't funny or it just genuinely wasn't funny? Just genuinely wasn't funny. Okay, fine. Um, so I'll just uh, update that picture there so my missile uh, comes out how it should. Okay, so basically now I'm going to show you how to use a loop to code out a smart bomb. Now, by now you should be used to using a hierarchy. So if I'm thinking about what a, what a missile will do, is it's going to seek out um, an enemy in this case, right? If this is a weapon for my player, it would seek out an enemy. So I'm going to start a class for enemies in my uh, game. And that'll give me targets for the smart bomb. So the enemy I'm going to pick, I'll just pick it, I don't know, maybe the ant as my, uh, uh, let's pick the bigger ant. Okay. And even though this is an ant, I'm going to ask the smart bomb to locate the closest enemy. It could be any particular class that I want. Maybe we can illustrate that. It's always good to reinforce and see it happening again. So let's uh, get another animal. We'll get a spider since, uh, you know, I think there's a spider in here. We'll add a spider to that because uh, I guess we squish them. So kind of like a smart bomb to squish your spider. So it won't matter what it is in our world, the smart bomb should try to locate the closest one. So let's go in the code and see what happens here. Now if I think about what I want the bomb to do, I want the bomb to be able to look at all of the enemies, decide who is closest, and then start flying towards that closest enemy, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I need a few methods to help me. In saying that, I need to know how far apart things are. So I'm going to give you an actor. And I'll tell you how far it is from me to that actor. So what I'll do is I'll say int x equals get x. Int y is get y. This is the actor's position. And in mathematics, there's the formula um, to tell you the distance. So the dx, the change in x, is going to be x minus the actor's x-coordinate. 
And the change in y is y minus the actor's y coordinate. And now I can use Pythagoras to say return math dot square root of dx squared plus dy times dy. So this will return to you how far you are, the center of your object, to the center of that other actor using the distance formula from math class. So now I can tell you how far apart I am. Now I also need to find the closest actor. So what I'm going to do is make a method that does that. It looks through all the enemies, and it's going to turn itself towards that. That'll be the result of it. So public void, I'll call it locate closest. So again, I'll tell you the steps. And of course, I've had a little more experience. So you might be thinking, how did you think of all that off the top of your head? I'm not going to promise you it doesn't make a mistake the first time I code it. But basically, what I need to do is get the list of enemies, look through all the enemies, and figure out how far apart I am. Whoever was closest, that's the enemy that I will go to. So I need a few things that I'm going to keep track of. So double the distance. Now. I want the closest distance. So you'll have to start with something that's so big um, that it wouldn't, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? That it wouldn't count. Or you can use the first enemy in your list. So that's probably the, uh, the safer way to do it. But this is going to keep track of the smallest distance. And I also need to keep track of the smallest enemy. Or sorry, the closest enemy. So I'll get my list now. And this is the way uh, you do lists. First, you have to tell Java about it. So I'm going to go up here and say import java.utilities.list. And to use the list iterator, I guess this is a good time to show you. In the documentation, it's also there. If you don't know how to import, then um, there should be a class path for you. Um, which, strangely enough, it's not in this documentation. Anyways, it belongs in the utility. Am I just not seeing it? No, but it belongs in the utility package. Um, if you click on package, it'll show you. Um, let's see here. The utility package is where it lives, right there. And it's got the list iterator and list. Both of them live in that place. OK. So now that I've imported it, Java will know what I'm talking about when I ask for them. So I'm going to ask for a list. And this is a new notation if you haven't seen lists before. These um, square brackets, or angle brackets, I guess, tell Java what type of thing is in the list. So this is a, a list that holds enemies. And the call that you're going to make is you have to get the world. And ask for all of the actors of type enemy. Now, once I've done that, I, I'm going to be given a list of all the different spiders and ants. That's the only types of enemies that I have. And I can traverse through all of them looking for the closest one. So the first thing that we should do is get a list iterator of it. And what it's traversing through are enemies. And now I can use that iterator 
to look for the closest one. So this is a process that might be new to you. I'll code it and then we'll talk about it. So I'm gonna say, uh, the first thing that I wanna do here is if, um, I'll show you in the documentation here. At this point, there's a few different places I could ask for it. If there is no next element, that means it's empty. Or I could ask the list itself and say, um, there's an is empty method. There's also a size method. So is empty and size will tell you how many elements are in the list. So there's a few ways I could say this in Java, but basically I want to know is if all enemies is empty. Uh oh, <laughs> there we go. Thank goodness for uh, undoing. If it's empty, then all I'm going to do is return. And that'll abort. There's nothing to find. Okay? You might decide on a different behavior. Like if there's no enemy, just start firing in any possible direction. But mine is just, it's not going to do anything unless there's an enemy there. So at this point, I know that there has to be at least one enemy. And that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to say um, enemy current is equal to my iterator dot next, which is going to give me that first enemy. And that's what I'm going to use to initialize all the stuff. So I'm going to say um, distance is equal to how far I am from this uh, current enemy. And the closest, I don't know of any enemy yet that's closer, has to be the current. So I'll keep going through each enemy to see if one can beat it. And the way I'll do that is I'll choose to use a while loop here. So while that iterator has a next enemy to look at, and I don't know if you remember how I like to set up my while loops. First, I do my initialization. Then I do my condition. And before I code, I do my update, just so I don't forget it. Um, current equals um, iterator.next. Okay. So now I know that I've gone to the next enemy in the list. OK, so now what I'm going to check is, is this enemy closer? So if, um, I guess I'll get, I might as well save it. Um, so current distance is equal to the distance to the um, current enemy. And I'll say if that distance is smaller than the one I've been keeping track of, then I need to update my loop and say, I've now found a closer enemy. It is located this far away. And the closest is this one I'm looking at, this current one. So this will loop through every enemy. And anytime it finds a closer one to go to, it will then uh, update how far that enemy is away so that I know if I found a new closer and which enemy it was. So at the end of this loop, closest now has the nearest enemy. So all I'm going to do is turn towards that closest enemy. So I'll say turn towards, and I'll give you the x and y coordinates for it. Um, closest dot get x and closest dot get y. So now I've gone through all the enemies in the, in the world. Whether there's a 1,000 or there's two, I can go through all of them, find the closest enemy, and direct the missile towards it. So what I'll do now is um, I'll go up and tell it how to act. When the smart bomb is going to act, I'm going to say locate closest. Not locate closet, but locate closest and then move one pixel. You can adjust the speed and et cetera, et cetera, but just for simplicity, we'll say that this moves one direct towards that closest enemy. 
Okay, now I'm gonna hold my breath here, but I'm hoping that there's no error. We'll see what happens and file was saved. Oh, I can keep my job as a, as a computing teacher. No syntax errors. Doesn't mean that it's gonna work properly, but the, the syntax is correct. So let's go see what happens when we put a smart bomb in the world and you can uh, watch the behavior. I'll compile all this stuff. And remember the smart bomb is only chasing enemies and in my world that's ants and spiders. So I'm gonna put a few ants and spiders in. These are my targets. Remember if you hold down the shift key, you can keep adding that character. So we'll put a bunch of ants in. Um, I'll put a bunch of spiders in too, just so you can see that uh, it's happy to find either now that they're part of the same hierarchy. Oh, thank you. Okay, so if I put a smart bomb right here, it should chase that uh, spider, okay? So if I hit the act button to show you what's gonna happen, it flipped, it found that first spider. Now it's gonna start moving towards that spider because it's the closest one. If I now was to say, let's change the rules and pretend that spider moved, watch what the smart bomb does. Now it's gonna say, okay, that one's my target, it's closest. So it's gonna keep going towards that enemy no matter what I do in this world. It's sometimes it's a spider, sometimes it's an ant. What I'll do is back this one up and say, okay, now where are you gonna go? To the closest spider. So this smart bomb looks through all the enemies, finds the closest one, and that's where it's headed to attack. You can probably come up with some more creative, some better features, etc. but that's a good starting point for you to see your first look at how to traverse through a list of enemies using your list class and an iterator, okay? Um, I'll show you some others, but basically other things you could do, um, a bomb where, or a health pack or something that affects everybody on the board. So maybe when you um, touch this health pack, it's going to uh, fire one bullet at every enemy. So you go through all the enemies and you hit them once or something like that. But uh, the process will be very similar for you.